Carbon emission in coffee farming comes from the use of synthetic fertilizers and pesticides. The over-application of synthetic products leads to health issues, environmental issues and biodiversity loss. The overuse of synthetic fertilizers alters the soil physiochemical properties and biological properties which is responsible for the decline of the soil organic matter content coupled with the decrease of the quality of the soil. The use of chemical fertilizers adds the soil, reduces fertility, pollutes the water, air and soil and lessens the important nutrients and minerals in the soil, bringing an hazard to the environment. SDGB project is developing a low carbon coffee value chain in Kenya by implementing regenerative uh, coffee farming practices and producing uh, biosolutions which include biocompost, biopesticides and biofertilizers both at cooperative and at farmer level. Biocompost making process is a simple way of making fertilizers and can be done at a farmer's level using the locally available materials putting into consideration the nutrient elements supplied by the locally available materials within the farm. The materials include the green material, which consists of the cow dung, the green vegetable, weeds, kitchen waste, green grass, and banana stalks. The brown material consists of the dry grass and the dry maize stalks. The source of energy entails the maize bran, molasses, or sugar, and finally, the rock dust.
저기 저기 Uh, when you are preparing your compost, the, the first, uh, you, you first of all you organize your your setup in this manner. Every material you place it at a designated position, so that when you want every material to come to the to the site, it it will be within reach. So the first material that you will bring to the to the use to make the layer is the brown material, which is uh, in our case it is. Uh, um, maize stocks. These maize stocks, you is the first one because of its size, so that it becomes easier when it, you are turning the your compost. It should come, it should be the first one. And uh, this compost is a source of is a brown material and it's a source of carbon. Alternatively, as a farmer, if you don't have maize stocks, you can use uh, maize cups. You can also use uh, sugarcane waste or even dry uh, napier grass or any dry leftovers of uh, animal feeds within your uh, cow shed. The importance of this brown material is to provide energy and also to provide carbon uh, that will propel, that will give an, an enabling environment for the microorganisms to act on uh, to act on other raw materials in the process of decomposition. After you have laid down your brown materials, the next step is to put another layer of green materials. Green materials, you can use uh, green napier grass, which is a source of uh, which is a source of nitrogen to your compost. However, you should not fix your eyes on the uh, napier grass, but you can use any green material within your reach. Examples are uh, 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 green weeds. We have uh, dittonia. We have uh, banana stalks, and any green material that is within your reach. So that becomes the second layer to be applied to your compost. The importance of these uh, green materials is source of uh, moisture content that is required by the microorganisms and also it's a source of uh, nitrogen that will add the element N to your uh, compost. After you have laid down the, the green materials you also have to add another source of which is another source of uh, green material which is cow dung. This cow dung uh, provides us with uh, with nitrogen and also it provides us with the moisture content that we require in the compost but most important thing that we also get from this cow dung is the uh, the microorganisms that normally lives in the rumen of a uh, of, um, a ruminant animal like cows, goats, sheep. Yeah, this cow dung or uh, dung is added to the compost to provide us with those uh, microorganisms, and th these microorganisms are the ones that we need to assist us in fermentation of the, of the raw materials. The next element that we need to add to our rock dust, uh, our compost, is uh, earth. And this earth first is a source of uh, my, uh, source of microorganisms that live in the in the soil, and also it acts as a a medium to hold our nutrients once the nutrients are released from these uh, um, raw materials. The next uh, element that we add to our compost is the volcanic rock. This volcanic rock is a source of uh, minerals the micro elements that we need to supply to our uh, our compost minerals like uh, calcium manganese potassium all those micro elements that we require by the crop we get from the volcanic rock the next um, um, raw material that we add to our compost is uh, charcoal 
this charcoal its role is to provide us with carbon and also it provides us uh, our microorganisms with home so uh, our charcoal is a home for microorganisms now that we have made our compost our microorganisms are still angry we need to, to provide them with food to give so that to give they get energy to act and to work so the next element that we add here are maize bran this maize bran is a source of energy to our microorganisms After we have placed our raw materials in this format, the raw materials that we have supplied here are dry, so we need to add some moisture in it to give a good uh, microclimate for our microorganisms to act well. After the first turning, two more consecutive times will be done, which is tomorrow and the day after tomorrow. Then, uh, the third and the fourth consecutive turning is done after a week. Every week, you do the same until the fourth turn and uh, in the process of turning you also measure the temperatures as you uh, check on the moisture content and uh, and the smell of the raw, uh, raw materials we use this yardstick to measure temperatures by inserting your yardstick across your compost like that and then you allow it to stay in the compo inside the compost for between two and three minutes and then you pull it again and then you just test with your arm to feel if the temperatures is improve uh, is rising or alternatively you can insert your your hand and test but if it's uh, very hot you will burn your fingers so we prefer using a yardstick. Finally, why should a farmer adopt the use of biosolution? One, it is cheaper compared to the synthetic fertilizers. Secondly, it benefits the environment by recycling the organic resource and healthy to the farmer and the crop. It adds nutrients and beneficial microbes, holds water and improves the coffee plant growth. Raw materials come from the community and money circulates in the community. The production process is quite easy, and the farmers can make their own bioproducts. <laughs>